In today's video, I am going over my comprehensive list of twin must-haves to put on your baby registry for 2020. I made a video like this a year ago that a lot of twin mamas loved, but since posting, some important items have been recalled and I have found some new items to add to this year's list, so I wanted to make an updated 2020 list of twin must-haves to help my fellow twin moms out there because I really needed something like this when I was preparing to be a first-time mom of twins. But before we get into it, I have to shamelessly plug my channel. Please like and subscribe if you have not already, and if you are a current subscriber, thank you so much. I really do appreciate you guys. And if you want to see my twins and my little singleton, you can check out my Instagram, just at my Zimmy. Okay, let's get into it. If you want to start an Amazon baby registry and follow along, I have links in the description below to do that quickly. To break everything down and make it easy to understand, I have five main categories that all the items fall into today. And first, we'll start with feeding. First thing on the list is the My Breast Friend pillow. Now, this is what I had for my twins, and it really is a great product if you plan on exclusively breastfeeding your twins and you're certain that you will be able to figure that out. I I unfortunately was not able to figure that out. I tried so hard, my nipples were raw and bloody and blistered and I just, I couldn't do it. I didn't produce enough milk for my twins, unfortunately. And so the My Breast Friend for me was rendered useless. The Twin Z pillow is what I wish I would have gotten. It can still be used for breastfeeding and if you're like me and you cannot figure that out for the life of you, you can still use it to prop your babies for bottle feeds. It is more expensive than the My Breast Friend, but there are dupes on Etsy that you can buy for cheaper or you can always go to the Facebook market and buy it used. They come with covers so you can remove that and wash them and then it'll stay nice for you. The next feeding related item you definitely need to get because it's usually covered by insurance is a free breast pump. Medela and Spectra are two popular brands that I know insurance covers. I personally had the Medela pump. I have a video that I'll have linked down below on my pumping routine, but I loved my Medela pump. I know a lot of moms also love Spectra. All you need to do to get your free breast pump is when you're beyond 29 weeks pregnant, you go to your OB, tell them that you want a free breast pump covered by insurance. They'll write you a prescription, no questions asked. This is a very routine thing for them. When you have the prescription, you call your insurance, give them the information on it, and they will nine times out of 10 approve you, no questions asked, and give you a list of pumps to choose from for free. In the very rare instance that they don't cover your pump at 100% cost, they are legally required to at least cover the rental of a pump at 100%. So no matter what, you should be getting a breast pump and not have to spend a dime if you're getting it through insurance. Now, to my knowledge, the free breast pumps that are available right now are the traditional breast pumps that you plug into the wall and they have tubes. It's this whole setup. It could be worth looking into some of the new cord-free, tube-free, hands-free pumps that have been coming out within the last year or two. I never personally use these. It honestly sounds like a dream to me as someone who pumped for nine months with twins. With the traditional Medela and Spectra that have the tubes and cords and are not hands-free, you are kind of in a mini jail whenever you're pumping. You can't do anything. So some of these new pumps that are coming out that you literally just stick them in your bra, sound like miracle products. So I'll have links in the description below for some of the options. I'm not sure if they're covered by insurance at this point. If they're not and you have the extra cash, it could be worth looking into because pumping around the clock when you also have to take care of two babies is a hassle. Next are bottles. I ended up with Dr. Brown's bottles for my twins. These were my holy grail bottles. They're anti-colic and unfortunately for me, both of my twins had colic. So this is the bottle that worked best for my family. But my big tip with bottles is not all babies like the same things, just like not all people like the same things. And to my bank account's detriment, when I was prepping for babies, I bought a massive set of Advent bottles only to learn that both of my twins hated Advent bottles. They did not work for them. All the bottles have different shaped nipples and not all babies like the different shapes. 
We also tried Nuke and Mam and eventually landed on Dr. Brown's bottles. So my advice here is get all the different registry freebies from Amazon, Target, Bye Bye Baby, Walmart. They generally come with one to two bottles each. Save those bottles and if it comes to the point where you need to bottle feed your baby, you can test out the different brands that come in these freebie gift bags and see what your baby likes. Then once you know, you can have your husband run to Target and Walmart and buy a whole bunch of them. Just don't waste your money like me and buy a whole bunch just to learn that your babies hate them. <laughs> With all that being said, I do have one type of bottle that I would maybe add to your registry because I know these don't come in any registry freebie bags and that is the hands-free bottles that you can buy on Amazon. I, I know it looks gimmicky, but it might be worth testing out to see if one of your babies will take it because when you're in the situation where both of your babies are screaming crying and you can't possibly hold or help both of them at the same time, if one is willing to take the hands-free bottle, that might be your golden ticket to silence. Last items on the feeding list are bibs and burp cloths. Babies can get messy and it's a lot easier to swap a bib than to swap an entire outfit. Now we will move to the adventure category. With twins, you will need a stroller that holds two car seats. If you're on a tight budget, Baby Trend sells a really good double stroller that holds two car seats. It's a great value, but I have to mention as someone who grew up in Minnesota, if you live in a wintry climate, you're probably going to need bigger, better wheels than this stroller offers. Overall, I am a huge proponent of your double stroller being your big splurge item on your registry. It is your beacon to freedom when you have twins. I tried going with cheaper strollers for basically the first year of my twin's life and it really just made my life harder than it needed to be. I ended up finally just getting the City Select double stroller, the one that I wanted from the beginning. I bought it used on the Facebook market and I absolutely love it now. I have a full review on it. I'll have linked in the description below. It's not sponsored. Nothing in this video is sponsored. Again, I'm just a twin mom trying to help out my fellow twin moms out there because no one helped me when I was expecting. For car seats, I got the Graco 35 infant car seat. It's a solid car seat, it's not too expensive, and car seats are something that you do not wanna buy used on the Facebook market. You don't know if it's been in an accident before or damaged in any way where it could be a safety concern. So Graco makes a solid car seat, and again, it's not too expensive, so buying two of them won't break the bank for you. Next twin must have is getting a baby carrier of some sort. This is a lifesaver. Babies love being up close to mommy and comforted. So a baby carrier is the perfect option to carry both babies around and keep them happy inside and outside the home. Most of my friends had the WeGo Twins carrier and they absolutely loved it. I was on more of a budget, so I actually had a boba wrap carrier, which is marketed for one baby, but if you Google on YouTube how to carry twins in a boba wrap, there's tons of videos that'll show you how to do this. I pretty much baby wore my twins 24 seven because they were colicky, as I said before, and were never very happy, but they were always happiest up close to me, so I just wore them all the time. They also had pretty bad reflux, so one would always end up throwing up all over the boba wrap, in which case I actually had a second boba wrap, which I would put on while the other one was being washed. I was never without one. My last must have in the adventure category is to get yourself a good diaper backpack. Not a diaper bag, a backpack. You are going to want both of your hands available for twins and a diaper backpack is the way to do that. I originally got a diaper bag. It would always fall off my shoulder or it was just so heavy packed with so much stuff that it ended up hurting my shoulder. I had the Itsy Ritzy Boss backpack and I absolutely love it. It was a push present to myself. I have a video of everything I have packed in it that I'll have linked below. It is not the cheapest bag. There's definitely cheaper backpack items out there. Just overall get a backpack. The next category is sleep. Now this is where a lot of the recalls happened last year and new sleep guidelines were set for newborns. I used Rock and Plays as bassinets for my twins when they were newborns. They had really bad reflux. I'm, I'm not sure how many times I've said that now, but my pediatrician actually recommended the Rock and Play sleepers to me because the Rock and Plays were angled sleepers. 
and the baby's head would be higher than the rest of the body and the gravity would then help keep the spit up down. However, the new sleep guidance is that newborns should be laying flat as the angled sleepers are SIDS risks. SIDS is obviously every parent's worst nightmare, so I would certainly follow the new sleep guidance. If your baby or babies develop reflux, I would talk to your pediatrician about the severity of it and depending on their age and everything, they will be able to give you the best sleep advice for your newborn. All I can tell you from my experience is after every single feeding with my twins, I would have to hold them upright for at least 30 minutes to help keep the spit up down. Now that is a lot with two babies, but refer back to the baby carriers and you will understand why my twins basically lived in them. So here are the most popular bassinet options and my thoughts on them. First, we have the Baby Trend Twins Retreat. It's a nice compact option that'll fit well into your room because your babies are likely going to be staying in the same room as you when they first come home. It's a less expensive option for twin bassinets. However, the product itself is a little misleading. If you look at their instructions and what customer service says about the item, it is not meant for two babies to be in the top nursery at the same time. Big downer. Technically, if you follow the manufacturer's instructions, if both babies are sleeping at the same time, one of the removable portable bassinets is supposed to be taken out and put on the floor, leaving only one baby in the top compartment in the remaining bassinet. That is a bit inconvenient, but overall it has really good reviews online and a lot of parents actually say that they like the portability of the bassinets for travel or even if they're just moving around the house and baby's sleeping, they can just bring the bassinet to wherever they're in the house. Another cheaper option is to just buy two separate singleton bassinets. You can get them for fairly cheap. Or if you have more money to spend and you really want a twin specific bassinet, you can splurge and get the Halo Twin Bassinet. It is really expensive and because of that, I did throw a little bit of shade at it in another video because your babies will not be in bassinets for very long. They do grow out of them quite quickly. However, the Halo Twin Bassinet does offer some features that twin moms would find very valuable that other bassinets just do not offer. And that mainly being is that the Halo Bassinet is very compact and it swivels over your bed so that you don't have to get up and get out of bed to get your twins. A lot of twin moms are gonna end up with C-sections, getting around isn't quite as easy, the recovery is longer, and having a bassinet that just swivels over you so that you can grab whatever baby needs your help in the middle of the night would be very useful. Can you survive without it and get cheaper bassinets? Yes. but. If you have the money, will it be very convenient? Yes. What I would probably do if I had twins again is I would try to buy it used on the Facebook market and then also sell it after for a very pretty penny because it looks like it has a great resale value. The next sleep related purchase is getting a little head donut. It's basically a little circular pillow that your twins would sleep on that have a hole in the middle to prevent flattening of the back of their head. I had to buy these when my twins started developing flat spots on the back of their heads the unfortunate truth with twins is they likely will not be held as often as a singleton would be it's just not possible plus with twins being born a little bit earlier than singletons on average it's more common for them to develop flat spots on the back of their heads we were very close to needing to get baby helmets for both of my twins and we just used these little sleep circle donuts religiously and it actually prevented further flattening and we fortunately never needed helmets Next is a two camera baby monitor. Trust me, you want to. I know they're not cheap. I found one that was pretty inexpensive on Amazon by the brand Axview. It's very basic. It doesn't link up to your phone or anything like that. So if you want something fancier, this might not be for you. But the Axview one does link up to up to four cameras. You can buy additional cameras on top of the two pack it comes with. And this was very useful when I ended up having a third baby less than two years after having my twins. But again, the Axview one does not link up to your phone if that's important to you, but it is a good cheaper option where you can add even more cameras. The next items in the sleep category are what your babies will be sleeping in. 
My favorite pajamas for my kids were the Cat and Jack brand pajamas from Target. They're really great because they zip from top to bottom, which makes diaper changes a lot easier because you just would zip then from the bottom just to above the belly button. The baby doesn't have to get all cold up top. I also really liked that the newborn and smaller sizes of the Cat and Jack pajamas actually had the built-in hand mittens. Your babies will have really long, talon-like fingernails. Babies like to scratch at their face for some reason, so you'll want some sort of mitten put on them, and the little mittens that you buy always fall off. So I really liked that the Cat and Jack pajamas had the mittens sewn on that you would then just like flip over their hands so that they can scratch themselves. Next is swaddles and sleep sacks. Swaddles are just like bottles. Not all babies like to be swaddled the same way. Don't do what I did and buy a million Halo sleep sacks because I just found out that my twins hated Halo sleep sacks. They just didn't like being swaddled in general. They would just fight it and grunt and just hate every second of it. And then as soon as I would take the swaddle off, they would calm down and go to sleep. At a minimum, even if your baby ends up not liking being swaddled in a halo sleep sack, they can still at least always wear them as a wearable blanket. My singleton actually didn't like being swaddled with his arms down either, but he really liked the love to dream swaddle up that kept his little arms up in the air swaddled in tight. And then there's also a new swaddle that came out. I'll have to, I'll have to Google what the brand name is but I guess there's a new one that has a weighted pad on it or something to mimic mommy's hand being on the baby, comforting the baby, and that's supposed to help them sleep nice. Overall, don't buy a million swaddles right off the bat. Buy one of a few different options, see what your babies sleep best in, and then make the further investment. Next category is bathing and diapering. For baths, I bought just a basic infant tub that could be used from the newborn stage all the way into the sitting stage. And I only bought one tub because I only felt confident washing one baby at a time. Another option is the blooming tub, which is this nice padded flower that fits perfectly into your kitchen sink for quick baths. For diapers and wipes, my go-to is Sam's Club diapers and wipes. They seem like the same exact thing as Pampers diapers and wipes to me, just a lot cheaper. If you don't live near a Sam's Club, I would download the Target Circle app if you haven't already. They always have a lot of good coupons on there. Plus, sign up for Huggies or Pampers rewards, then call their service line and they'll send you a bunch of coupons, stack coupons, do what you can because diapering twins is a lot of money. <laughs> If you want more info on diaper rewards or just free stuff in general for your twins, I have a free baby stuff video that I'll have linked below that you should watch after this. For a diaper pail, I recommend getting the Ubi diaper pail. I originally started off with a diaper genie and it's a plastic contraption that ended up breaking on me within a month or two. So a complete waste of money, plus the bag inserts for the diaper genie that you have to use are very expensive. So over time, it actually racks up a lot of dollars. The Ubi diaper pill is great because the structure itself is metal, so it's much more solid. I've had mine for years at this point and it still works just fine, just as good as day one. Plus, you can use your regular kitchen trash bags in the Ubi diaper pail. So in the long run, I actually feel like I'm saving a significant amount of money not having to buy special diaper pail inserts. The next category is play. Have at least one swing in your house to keep one baby entertained while you're caring for the other. Two is preferable if you have the budget. Activity mats are great for the newborn stage. Your twins will be doing their tummy time on them. You can get one really big one for your twins to share, or I liked having options, so I ended up with two. Once they're a little bit older, two extra saucers or jumpers are a must have for twins. Hours of entertainment so you can pump, do dishes, clean, or just have a well-deserved break. If you liked this video, I have a whole twin video playlist that you should check out. And if you plan on buying any of the items that I talked about, it really helps my little channel if you use my affiliate links in the description below so that I can keep making these videos for you guys. 
If you have any questions about anything in this video or really anything twin related, comment below. I read every single comment and I answer all questions. And if you want to see what life is like with twins, again, you can follow me on Instagram at myzimmy and I will see you in the next video. Bye.